Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Misa and I am crazy about helping you enhance your foundation routine. And I know 90% of you watching aren't subscribed to my channel. Please subscribe. I would love if you join along. I upload every Monday and Wednesday. Today is another The Truth Foundation Edition series. We're going over the Morphe Hint Hint Skin Tint. In these videos, I concentrate on if the claims match up with the ingredients. Are the ingredients in this formula good or are they bad? So if any of that interests you, go ahead and and keep on watching. Okay, so this is a whopping $17. I love the glass packaging. It has like this little Doppler. It has 20 different shades. When I was in the store, it was actually really hard to find a shade that matched me. I have a neutral undertone, medium to tan skin, and this is a hint of caramel. This is for tan skin with neutral undertone. So that's one of my complaints. I don't, I did not feel like they had enough undertones and enough shades. I don't know if it works different with skin tints, if they're more customizable. I'm not quite sure. This is a radiant finish. What's nice about this is you can use this really lightly sheer, a sheer coverage or a medium coverage. The other claims of this foundation is that it is lightweight and breathable. It's also non-comedogenic, which means it's not going to clog your pores. And those are the claims. And holy cow, guys, the ingredient list on this is super short. The first ingredient in this is water, very common. And then the second ingredient is isodotacane. This is a good ingredient and it really helps to prevent moisture from leaving the skin. It minimizes color transfer and usually results in a matte finish. So you see this in a lot of matte products. In case you're new here, I get all of my information from Paula's Choice Dictionary. They basically have a list there of all the ingredients that you can find on cosmetics and whether they're good, bad, poor, average, or best. So I'll have that linked down below. I'm not a medical professional. I'm not an esthetician. So take what I say with a grain of salt. One thing I really like to keep in mind when I look over these ingredient lists that it's the first five ingredients that make up 80% of the product. The next ingredient is a good silicone, nothing there. The next ingredient is glycerin, which is one of the best ingredients you can use in a foundation because it's skin restoring, skin replenishing, and it really helps skin maintain a healthy look and feel and prevent against dryness as long as, long as it has 5% of it, this ingredient in the product. The next ingredient is phenyl trimethicone. It's a good ingredient. It's a silicone with a drier finish than dimethicone. So a lot of foundations have silicones in them just because they provide a silky finish. They're an emollient. It's able to really keep moisture levels in. And they actually just have some normal salt in here, sodium chloride. It's a binding agent and it's sometimes used in scrubs. A lot of brands like to use salt in their ingredient list because it's incredibly affordable and it's highly effective. And those are all the ingredients that were above the 1% mark. Minoxyethanol is a preservative and it's only allowed to be at the highest concentration of 1% in USA. And so everything under that is less than 1%. The only ingredient I found a little concerning is talc, which talc is just an average kind of ingredient, but it's so low on the list, I'm not concerned about it. The things you have to worry about with talc is where it's sourced from, but we can get more into that on another day. But since it's so low, on the list of ingredients, I'm not too concerned. And that's the ingredient list. Holy cow, I love when it was, it's short, easy to read through. So far, there's nothing concerning about it. Really, we're just going to have to see the application test and how this wears throughout the day since none of the ingredients were too concerned. So let's go ahead and get into the application test. Okay, I'm going in with a really lightweight primer. This is the Photo Finish Primer Oil. And then I really want to go in with an SPF and I'm going to go in with my Silken Tatcha SPF 35. <laughs> Okay, so you can apply this a number of ways if you want. It's super sheer. Mix it in with your moisturizer, just one to two drops if you want it just regularly sheer. I didn't realize there was a sheer and really sheer. If you want a medium application, do a layer with a drop or two and then let it dry and then go back in with more. I'm personally the type I want a little bit more coverage, so let's do the medium application style. This is the bottle. I love the glass packaging. The Doppler's cool. I don't buy skin tints a lot. You know, they're just not something I'm super intrigued by, but maybe I'll change my mind. The shade I have is Hint of Caramel. While I was in the store, I will say they had 20 different shades. A lot of them were sold out, and I just kind of felt like they weren't catering to all the different undertones. I'm going in with this IT Cosmetics Foundation Buffing Brush, and it just says to use, what, one, two drops? Let's do two drops. and see how this, whoa. Very sheer coverage. The color does apply dark, but then it like brushes out. So it looks like, it just looks a little red on me. So far we're into like five drops. There we go, let's build this up. Mm. 
man, the shade. So, so far I've applied about, I don't know, 10 drops. And this is where we're at. So this is one full layer. I'm not quite sure what I think about it. Skin tints are so different for me because I'm just used to having that, like a nice layer of foundation on. I do like that you can see my freckles. I do like how I'm, it doesn't look like I'm wearing much makeup, but the only thing I don't like is this color. It just seems a little, it looks almost looks like I have a bad, like fake tan on my face, you know? So I'm just gonna let this sit for a minute and I want to just do a couple more drops all over my face just to kind of build this up just a little bit. And this is where we're at. The finish is beautiful. It's like a nice velvety, like a nice natural glow coming through. I do feel like you're going to have to set this just a little bit, depending if it dries down or not with a light setting powder. I'm definitely gonna go in and apply some concealer, finish up the rest of my makeup and see how it looks. All right, makeup is completely on. I feel like in the viewfinder, I look very bronze, <laughs> like super bronze, but I'm not mad about it. We'll see, we'll see how it looks later on today with the rest of my body. Uh. As far as the rest of my makeup that I applied, I thought I'd just really quickly share with you. I went in with my Hourglass setting powder just to like lightly set everything. You don't really need to use a lot of this. I use this Aesthetica bronzer. I got this in my BoxyCharm this month. If you haven't seen that video, I'll have it linked down below. But it's a matte bronzer. It's really blendable. I was shocked about it because when I got this, I was not sold. And now it's, it's definitely one of my favorites. And then blushes, one of my favorites as well, Patrick Ta blush, and She's Sincere. Such a beautiful muted peach color. And I like to put that in my crease as well as with my bronzer. Sticking with Patrick Ta, I used this tinted brow wax. I just get this wet with some setting spray, use a spoolie, and kind of move it up. I do have to go into powder beforehand, and I, I use my Benefit brow powder. Love Benefit's brow products, they're awesome. Highlight, oh, Revlon Skin Lights Highlight. I like this because it's just a very like glass skin sheen. It's not too chunky. Revlon Concealer, this has been my go-to. I really like it. It's a medium coverage, just kind of blends out really easily. Mascara, I use my Roller Lash Mascara. Where did it go? Roller Lash Mascara. I'm actually in the market for another mascara. I go through them like crazy. And to set everything, I use my ColourPop Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Acid Setting Mist, one of my favorites. This is what it's looking like. I think it looks really nice. With the skin tint, I think the only thing I was concerned about is the color, but once I have it really blended out, I have all the rest of my makeup on, I think it looks really good. Oh my gosh, I forgot to tell you my lip color. This is Pure Hollywood Anastasia Beverly Hills. It's one of my favorite lip colors by that. I'm going to wear this throughout the day and kind of see how it wears. So far, I really like how it does have a very skin-like effect. It doesn't feel heavy on the skin. It was really easy to blend out. It was just the color. I didn't feel like it has a true neutral undertone. I felt like more of a red undertone, but we'll see how that plays throughout the day. I do have to work out today. I won't do anything too crazy. And we'll see exactly how this right, works. folks, the foundation has been on for about four hours, which I totally forgot to do a timestamp earlier and it was about eight o'clock. And this is what it's look like, looking like. I'm about to go work out. So I wanted to, you know, show you what it looks like before I work out. Honestly, it's not the most flattering tint, skin tint foundation. Like I do feel like it emphasizes my pores. I do feel like, ooh, if you have fine lines, this is gonna settle right into your fine line. I have some fine lines. Some people will be like, hey, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I do. And I have some right here. Like it just kind of feels like it sits on top of my skin, which I really liked how it looked initially. I don't know, even from far away, I'm kind of like, eh, eh. But we'll see what it looks like in about six hours at the end of the day and see exactly how it looks. All right, guys, final check-in. It is 5.05, so the, the foundation has been on for nine hours. <laughs> nine hours, and this is what it's looking like. My roller lash mascara isn't isn't holding up. Used to be one of my favorites, but man, I mean, look at these little darker. I mean, overall, it kind of looks nice, right? Like, what's nice about tints is it's not looking like cakey. You know, it just doesn't look heavy, which is great. There's just something about this that is just not working for me. Like, just the thought of using this another day, I'm like, eh, I just don't, I don't want to. This was definitely promoted and released and collabed with, I don't even know their names. It's like De Emilio. 
the TikTok sisters. They're gorgeous, beautiful, talented. I'd imagine that this is geared more toward younger skin. I think it'll work great if you are younger and you just really like something really sheer and you don't have to worry about like adding a whole a lot of makeup on top of it, powders or anything like that. It might work really well for you. Hope you found this review helpful. Did, have you tried out this tint? What do you think about it? Let me know in the comments down below and I will see you guys next one. Bye. You're just afraid to say